to the channel. Here I share scareful stories. Stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you like what you see, please give the video a like, leave a comment down below, and consider subscribing to the channel. No, don't just consider it, do it. Subscribe to the channel. And now, the scareful story of Cody Roman Dial, son of an adventurer who grew up to be an adventurer himself before going missing while on a solo hike in the Corcovado National Park in Costa Rica. Like all children, Cody's story starts before he was even born with his mom and dad. Cody's dad, Roman Dial, is a well-known adventurer. I first read about the story of him and his son in a magazine and then went on to read The Adventurer's Son, a book Roman Dial wrote about his life, his family, his son going missing on a solo hike, and his search for him. Although I'm about the farthest thing from an adventurer as can be, I was moved by Roman's story and as a parent could relate to many of the feelings expressed in his book. I've linked the book down below and encourage you to read it. It's truly the work of a father's heart. So let's get into some background. As a child, Roman Dial spent a few summers with family in Alaska and became enchanted by the beauty and wildness of mountains, snow, rivers, and the backcountry. He decided to attend college in Alaska and after falling in love with mountaineering and also a woman named Peggy, who later became his wife, he decided to make Alaska his home. Over the following decades, he tackled both academic pursuits, including two degrees in mathematics and two in biology, as well as outdoor pursuits, including pack rafting, mountain climbing, and adventure racing, before adventure racing even became a thing. National Geographic described him as a mythic figure, renowned for audacious feats in mountaineering, ice climbing, rafting, and grueling backcountry endurance races. Roman and Peggy welcomed a son on February 22, 1987, naming him Cody Roman Dial, Roman after himself, and Cody after Cody Pass in Alaska. A daughter, Jasper Linda Dial, named after her grandmother in the Canadian Rockies, followed in 1989. At this point, Roman was pursuing a PhD at Stanford University in California. I really felt for Peggy at this point as I've been the wife of a lowly paid grad student while starting a family and trying to get your feet under you raising children. Unlike my husband's research, which can mostly be done from our basement, Romans took him on adventures all over the world. The Dial family spent time living in Puerto Rico and ventured to Australia before returning to California and ultimately made their way back to Alaska. All the while, the kids were right there with them, living the wildlife along with their parents. On one particular trip in the Alaskan wilderness, Cody, then only six, was asked his name and much to his father's surprise and delight, he responded with Roman II. And from that moment on, Cody would be called by almost everyone by his middle name and his father's name, Roman. It would seem Cody wanted to be just like his dad. From here on out, Roman will refer to Cody Roman Dial. Roman had a childhood full of travel. In addition to Puerto Rico, Australia, and the back country of Alaska were trips to Borneo, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Bhutan. His parents were raising their children to not just love the outdoors, but to be independent, curious adults. At age 16, Roman made a solo trip to Mexico to study Spanish. It was a trip that really solidified his growing independence. At age 17, he participated in the Alaskan Mountain Wilderness Classic with his father, finishing in sixth place, the top placement by a 17-year-old in the history of the race. In 2005, Roman began attending the College of William and Mary in Virginia and graduated with a degree in biology. He found love and lost love, as well as losing a friend to cancer. He sought solace in the outdoors and work, eventually pursuing a master's degree at Alaskan Pacific University. In late 2013, Roman decided he needed a break from graduate school and research work and opted for a month long adventure. He started by visiting college friends and then headed down to Latin America. In 2014, Roman's dad met up with him in Veracruz, Mexico for two weeks of whitewater rafting. Before his dad returned to Alaska, Roman told him of his plans to spend some time in the Sierra Madre to see where all of the monarch butterflies winter before making his way through Central America and ending up in Brazil. 
There would be exploring in Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Panama, and Colombia along the way. At the airport, father and son exchanged I love yous and hugged goodbye. Neither knew it would be the last time they saw each other. On February 22, 2014, his 27th birthday, Roman had his iPhone stolen from his tent. He decided not to replace it due to the expense and that he rarely used it, given the expense of international texts and phone calls. He kept in contact with his family through emails in which he talked about his travels and thanked his parents for helping him to become an independent traveler. Despite there being cheap local tour guides in the places he visited, Roman had grown up with a family that explored on their own and that same instinct to go it alone, so to speak, lived in him. His adventures were made all the more rewarding because they were all his, done solo. By June, Roman was planning what he thought would be the most dangerous part of his trip, the Darien Gap. The Darien Gap is a gap in the road system between Panama and Colombia due to political tensions, drug trafficking, and the prevalence of dangerous wildlife, it is not considered a safe place to be off trail hiking. Before tackling the Darien Gap, Roman thought he'd shore up his skills by hiking off trail in Corcovado National Park located on the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica. He arrived in Puerto Jimenez on April 8, 2014 and checked into a hostel. The next day, he emailed his parents two emails filling them in on his hiking plans. The park required that every visitor have a licensed guide, but Roman planned on hiking off trail and without a guide. His plan was to spend four days in the jungle and spend one day hiking out. His email ended with, I'll be bounded by a trail to the west and the coast everywhere else, so it should be difficult to get lost forever. His email, which from a quick glance seemed to his father to be a follow-up to a previous email about maps, would not be read in full for two whole weeks. On the morning of July 10th, Roman checked out of the hostel, reserving a bed for when he planned on returning and asking that a small bag and a large pack be stored. He took a new pack along with him on his trip into the jungle. As days passed with no word from their son, Roman and Peggy Dial became concerned, but they also didn't want to be overbearing parents. As more days passed, something nagged at Roman's dad, and on July 23rd, he dove back into his emails and read the July 9th email in full. Reading that his son, planned to be out of the jungle by roughly July 15th, sent panic through the couple, and they quickly sprang into action. Roman's dad contacted a company that provided guides in the Corcovado National Park, seeking advice on how to best search for him. He bought a ticket to Costa Rica and also enlisted a friend who not only knew Spanish, but who was familiar with jungle hiking to come along with him. The U.S. Embassy was called and the local police were contacted. Roman's hiking plan, map, and photos of him were sent to everyone his parents could find contact information for. Word quickly spread. Family and friends helped raise money for a search. An English-language Costa Rican newspaper even picked up the story and posts were made on Facebook. Roman's dad and his friend arrived in Costa Rica on July 25th. They made the Iguana Lodge their home base. Run by an American couple for over 20 years, the owners not only provided necessities like computers and printers, but also invaluable insight into how Costa Rica works. Although somewhat encouraged by the sight of missing posters that were posted all over town using photos provided in emails, Roman's dad was less encouraged by his meeting with the Ministry of Environment and Energy. The ministry is the agency in charge of Corcovado National Park. Questions were asked about when was the last time Roman's dad had seen him? Did Roman do drugs? And then a bombshell. The ministry official said that Roman had been seen with a known drug dealer, paying him money to guide him through the jungle with eventual plans to go surfing. This didn't sound like Roman, who may have smoked pot on occasion, but didn't partake in harder drugs. He also wouldn't have ditched his solo hiking plans, hire a guide, and end up surfing, much less do those things without letting his parents know. The ministry officials seemed to doubt that Roman's dad really knew his son, choosing to believe that kids will be kids and that Roman probably did take off to surf. Not getting the help they felt they needed, Roman's dad and his friend went in search of the place Roman had stayed before his journey into the jungle. It didn't take long for them to find the hostel he had stayed at. The woman who ran the hostel pointed them to the area where many travelers stored their packs. Of the two that Roman had left, his father only recognized one, the other having been bought 
by Roman after he and his dad had parted ways in Mexico. The next day, the story of Roman having been seen with the known drug dealer expanded. The drug dealer had been questioned by authorities and told of guiding Roman not to Corcovado National Park, but to various points outside the park. He claims that after the trip, Roman got money from an ATM to pay him and then departed to go surfing. Roman's dad tried to take this as good news. His son was alive, despite the nagging inside saying Roman wouldn't act like this. As word spread of the missing hiker, sightings of Roman came in from all over. The owner of the hostel changed her story to say that Roman had indeed returned after a hike, but that he had left again. She expected him to be back again. The news comforted his father, and he called to spread the good news to his wife. Their son was safe and just off exploring and not in touch. I've always read that denial is one of the strongest human drives, and you can see why. We all want to believe the good version to avoid dealing with all the possible bad versions. Despite the story by authorities that Roman was alive and well, the following day there was a helicopter search. A helicopter flying over a jungle, however, isn't of much use. The canopy is so dense it is near impossible to see anything on the ground. Roman's father, realizing his son was not off surfing and becoming impatient, wanted to start searching the jungle himself for his son. While Roman's dad worked on finding him in Costa Rica, people back home were trying to help as well. The FBI was able to determine that Roman last emailed anyone on July 10th and that the last activity in his bank account was July 9th, confirming that Roman had not used an ATM to pay a sometimes drug dealer, sometimes tour guide. The known drug dealer was taken into custody on another matter, and when Roman's father asked if he'd said anything more about his son, investigators told him that whatever he said could not be trusted. They knew that he was prone to making up stories, and yet that didn't stop some people from trying to convince Roman's dad that the one story about his son must be true. Finally, Roman's dad managed to put together a small search team and secure permission to search the park. His son had emailed him his hiking plan, and so it seemed obvious to look for him along his stated route. A brief search turned up nothing, nothing except for authorities to begin to consider Roman's dad to be unfit for more searches. In theory, one can see how being so emotionally invested in the search may lead to risking too much and perhaps creating other emergency situations. But at the same time, who will search better than a parent looking for their lost child? Leaving his friend behind to continue the search the next day, Roman's father returned to the Iguana Lodge. There he had time to think, reminisce, and to wonder if he was the cause of his son having gone missing. Obviously he wasn't, and yet he'd raised his son to love not just the outdoors, but wild backcountry adventures. What if he had raised his kids more conventionally, would he not be searching for his son right then? Good news came the next day. There was a legitimate sighting of Roman in the jungle. A gold miner had seen Roman on a trail in the jungle. He took special note of him because it was unusual to see a non-local out in the jungle on a non-tourist trail. He and the group he was with stopped to talk with him for a short time, and the details he provided to Roman's father convinced him that this was a real encounter with his son. Even though the encounter had happened over two weeks prior, it gave them a concrete place to start a search knowing for certain Roman had been there. A father's love and determination took over, and no matter what local officials said, Roman's dad would not be deterred from searching for his son, even if it meant breaking the law. The next day, Roman's father, his friend, and the miner who had spoken with Roman and a local who knew the jungle intimately made their way to the point last seen. Even if it didn't provide more clues, it was at least a starting point. Later that day, Roman's father attended a meeting with local authorities who provided a review of all the places their teams had searched. There were many volunteers who aided in searching, and at this point, over 100 locations had been logged by GPS as having been cleared. The major trails in the park had all been searched, as well as drainages. There had also been a sweep of the park by authorities looking for illegal mining activity in the days following the sighting of Roman by the miner, but before he was reported missing. None of the searches turned up any sign of Roman. As if that weren't frustrating enough, local officials continued to insist that Roman hadn't even gone hiking in the park, still clinging to the story that he had been with the drug dealer on a different trail. The plan was to soon end the search efforts. 
The news that the official searches would cease only spurred Roman's dad on even more to get out into the jungle. He began preparing for a multi-day trek. That night, a call came in claiming to have information about Roman, that he had been kidnapped and for a fee of $15,000, this person could help get him back. The story and offer sounded sketchy and Roman's dad entered the jungle the next day searching again for his son. That search as well turned up no signs of Roman. Returning to town, officials had officially called off the search and it was time for his friend to return home to his family. Roman's dad was left to search, worry, and to think. He thought a lot about what it means to be a good parent. Almost all in society would agree that a good parent wouldn't provide their children with drugs, but can't other things become like drugs for some people? What about a quest for adventure? We all know stories of people addicted to the rush they get from extreme sports. Is exposing your kids to backcountry hiking, mountain climbing, and the like setting them on a dangerous path? In the midst of his worry and growing grief, Roman's dad faced feelings of guilt about how the way he had raised his son had led them all to this moment right there when his son was lost. Soon, new help would arrive from the states in the form of searchers as well as diplomatic help in convincing Costa Rican authorities to allow Roman into the park to continue searching. Back in the jungle, Roman's father and searchers hacked through dense vegetation, rappelled down waterfalls, risked their own lives in the hopes of saving another. More locals who may have seen Roman were spoken to, trying to sort through the false sightings with the drug dealer, hoping for any real leads. The person seen with the drug dealer wore Crocs. Let me repeat that, Crocs. Roman Dial would never be out hiking in Crocs. Details like these kept proving that although the drug dealer may have been seen with someone, even an American, it hadn't been Roman. With a month having passed since Roman's out date, his father growing ever more desperate, set off to search a location provided to him by a psychic. Having no success with searches, a push was made to get both the United States government along with Costa Rican authorities more involved and invested in getting experienced searchers out and looking for Roman. Roman's mom led the effort from home in Alaska while his dad continued to work on things in Costa Rica. Donated funds were used to send search and rescue experts down to help with the searching. The wet season had arrived, making the jungle even more dangerous. Deadfall, the word for falling branches and trees, picks up during the rainy season as the roots of the trees are shallow, all the moisture speeds up decay, and storms with strong winds make deadfall all the more likely. While out on a search, a large tree fell within a few feet of one of the searchers' tents, reminding everyone the risk they were taking and the risk Roman had already accepted. The search wrapped up, searchers returned to the United States, but Roman's dad stayed in Costa Rica, awaiting the arrival of Roman's mom and sister. They wanted to come and see things for themselves. With so much of the area around the point last seen searched, Roman's dad began to wonder if maybe Roman wasn't in the park. Not that he believed the gone surfing story, but maybe something else had happened. Maybe something criminal. In the hopes of getting new leads, a poster was made showing pictures of the gear Roman was believed to have with him. Pictures of green shoes, his cooking stove, his sleeping pad, tent, and clothing were shown along with the notice of a reward for the items. Upon returning home to Alaska, Roman's family tried to keep busy and their minds off their missing son. There would be more trips down to Costa Rica and even a search into Panama. Nothing yielded results though, and Roman's parents tried as best they could to hold out hope for a safe return. At the same time, they kept wondering if their son had perished not by a mishap in the jungle, but at the hands of an evil person. Roman's parents were approached by a television production company about the possibility of producing a documentary about their missing son. They would provide a criminal investigator and also an ex-military man with search experience. Hoping it would bring more attention to their plight, as well as aid in finding their son, they signed on to do the show in June of 2015. Almost immediately, they regretted the decision. Rather than documenting a search, the show became more like a reality TV show with written lines and dramatic recreations, including one of Roman's potential death. The company was unable to get permits to search in the national park, so with no searches to film, the producers decided to focus on tracking down evidence that a crime had been committed. And track down they did, revealing to Roman's father 
that the drug dealer had been with his son and that, along with some other men, had killed him. When questioned about a motive, he was told it was for a little bit of money Roman had on him at the time. And just when his dad didn't think it could get any worse, he was told that Roman's body would never be found because he had been dismembered and fed to sharks. All the frustration from months upon months of worry, guilt, anguish, and having others decide they knew his son better than he did made his father angry. He knew his son didn't go off with the drug dealer. He knew it in his bones, but no one seemed to want to believe him. As production of the show continued, Roman's father began again to wonder if everyone around him was right, and he was the one who really hadn't known his son as well as he thought he did. The drug dealer was interviewed and gave a semi-confession of being there when other men kidnapped Roman. Even if Roman's dad still questioned the truth of the tale, he could not deny that having a TV production crew filming the documentary seemed to get people's attention, both in the United States and in Costa Rica. If the story of kidnapping and murder told by the drug dealer was true, then it would benefit everyone to find Roman's body. In Costa Rica, there has to be a body for a murder conviction. Obviously, Roman's family wanted to find their son's remains, and if he had been murdered, get justice for their son, while government officials wanted the case of missing Roman Dial wrapped up as a way to show the system worked. In the first half of 2016, Roman's parents made four trips down to Costa Rica searching for their son. By May, the documentary was almost done being filmed and the first episodes were about to air. Roman's parents were busy doing promotional spots for the show, including one that showed them speaking to the FBI. Checking their phones after the meeting, Roman's dad saw that there was a message from a Costa Rican phone number. Returning the call, an embassy official told him that a body had been found in the jungle, along with camping gear, believed to belong to Roman. The date was May 19, 2016, nearly two years after Roman went missing. The next day, the embassy sent photos of the equipment that had been found, and Roman's parents were able to positively identify them as his. Roman's dad quickly caught a flight to Costa Rica, arriving on the very day the first episode of the documentary was set to air. His focus was on getting to his son. He hiked into the jungle, wondering how he could have missed his son on all of his previous trips. The area Roman was found in was easier to get to during the dry season. Upon reaching the site, all of Roman's belongings were there, and included with them was a bag of bones. It was Roman. This was real. He had finally been found. The bones and much of the camping gear had been washed downstream. None of the bones found showed any signs of a crime having been committed. There had been no heavy blows, no marks, no bullet holes. Roman's passport was found, along with a small amount of money. Food was also found, suggesting that Roman had not been injured only to the point of not being able to get out of the jungle and subsequently starved. Instead, it appeared as though he had been setting up his camp when tragedy struck. There was some evidence that perhaps a tree had fallen on the camp, most likely killing Roman instantly. There was also the possibility that Roman had been bitten by a poisonous snake as they are plentiful in the jungle. But no matter what had happened, there was absolutely no evidence that a crime had been committed. The producers of the documentary almost seemed disappointed by the find. They were hoping to solve a murder by the end of the series, including the arrest of someone who was possibly simply making up a story. Just like his struggle to decide if he had exposed his son to too much adventure and exploration, Roman's father struggled with having taken part in the documentary. In the end, though, the show spurred more action than had happened in the initial days, weeks, and months following Roman's disappearance. Ultimately, it was the depiction of Roman's potential murder in the trailers for this series that spurred local miners to go back into the jungle searching for Roman's remains. They wanted closure of the case and to hopefully prove that Roman had not been murdered. DNA and dental records confirmed what Roman's dad already knew, that the remains were his. Roman was cremated and his ashes taken back to Alaska. On December 21, 2016, his family and friends held a memorial service where everyone told stories about Roman celebrating his life and adventurous spirit. With the search finally over, their son finally brought home, Roman's father began a new chapter and began writing his book, The Adventurer's Son, trying to make sense of it all. His own life, Roman's life, and all of the life choices that had brought them to this point. So what do you think? 
Is it better to protect your kids, not letting them get a feel for adventure, or is the risk of adventure worth it? Is it right to think that it's better to die doing what you love, or does that ignore the reality that although you may die doing what you love, your loved ones are left behind to worry, search, and grieve? Have you heard of Roman's story? Have you read the book? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And until next time, stay safe and stay careful.